G'day. I'm going to give you some of the best advice I have to help progress your career faster as a structural engineer. And if you stick around to the end, there'll be a piece of advice that you probably like you've never heard of that will help progress your career faster than anything else you can do. I'm Brendan, your structural engineer. And if, you, and if you're interested in helping progress your career faster as a structural engineer, improve your design skills, or just interested about engineering, don't forget to subscribe. Now, let's get into it. When you look at engineering, you've got to realize it's really an art of imprecision. And we're dealing with variables throughout the whole life cycle of a structure, whether that be through the construction methodologies or the materials. This is perfectly summed up by a quote by Dr. A.R. Dykes, where he wrote, Engineering is the art of modeling materials we do not wholly understand. Into shapes we cannot precisely analyze, as to withstand forces we cannot properly assess in such a way that the public has no reason to suspect the extent of our ignorance. This perfectly sums up what we're doing. As you can see, we have materials such as concrete that is variable over time in linear behavior. And we're also on a construction site, which, which is not a manufacturing line. So things go wrong. Everything we do is an estimate. Even the loads that we see on the structure is an approximation to what we see. So when you're just starting out in the structural engineering field, you've just graduated, you think you know everything you need to know to be a good structural engineer. However, you will be sadly mistaken, as you'll soon find out when you're moving into the field. You barely know anything from where you've graduated. You've barely taught just a little bit how to scratch the surface, how to design structures and how to put them together. They haven't really told you how to build that structure or how that structure gets built or even how to display that to someone to be able to build that. When you're first starting out, there will be constant learning that you need to do. You have to make time to study. Now, this is not just the study career. This is throughout your whole career and through your whole life cycle as being a structural engineer. As the more the more you learn, the more you realize you don't understand about the engineering. There's always something to learn to improve your skills. So one thing I like to do, or it's one thing that I'm really passionate about, is that the day I stop learning is the day I retire. When you're starting to design, I, I like approach it in a big data collection process to make sure I have everything I need to be able to design that thing effectively at the start. Now, we need to collect a lot of data like plans, codes and even client briefs to ensure that you have all the information you need to design it effectively. Now when you have that data it's always worth writing it down into a methodological statement because then you have a logical order about how you're going to approach that design and, and when someone else picks up that design they can have a look exactly what you've done and how you approach that. So it makes it easier for them to pick up and check to ensure that you've done it correctly. When you're undertaking that design you would also find out that hand computations and 3D models go hand in hand as you need some way to assess whether the model you produced is accurate or not. So when I'm starting a complex design, I'll start off with a hand assumption to see wh where I'm going. Then I'll build a simple 2D stick frame and it'll get more and more complex into a 2D frame, into a 3D frame to ensure that the model is behaving as expected. If there is unknown discrepancies between the two things, then you drill down and you can see what, what precisely is wrong. Maybe your hand comp and assumptions were wrong or maybe the model you modeled, you've made wrong assumptions. With computers, it's garbage in, garbage out. When you're reviewing your models, look for patterns. It's really your best friend as you'll quickly spot errors within your design, or even efficiencies that you can potentially achieve elsewhere. So when you're looking for a design, if you see it and break in that pattern, why is it broken? Maybe there's some reason, maybe the load's reduced or there's some other causes that reduce that. But if there's not, you have to drill down and work out why that, why that is different. Maybe, maybe the design is incorrect, or maybe maybe you've over-designed other areas as well. So look for patterns in your design. It'll be a quick way to assess whether you've got an accurate design there or not. If the patterns are changing, why are they changing? There may be some reason. If not, potentially there's an error that you need to fix. The stability of the structure is important to any structural design. Now, how do you know if you've got a stable structure? Well, think back when you were a kid. You had a cardboard box. How did you make that box stable? If you tried to stand it up and didn't have the back end closed up, it would fall over. So what does that teach us about, about stability? You need a minimum of three points to make it stable. So as you can see, you need the two sides and the back to make that structure stable. If we open it, it falls over. We pull it up, close it up. So we can apply this to our structural designs as well. So whenever you're assessing the where you've got the stability through your structure, ensure that you have th three directions of stability within your within that structure. Now, stability can be achieved through a number of ways. On the smaller buildings, you can have sway frames. As you're going up in size, you start to have cross bracing and shear walls, and then potentially cores and outriggers. There's a big, broad range of stability elements you can have in a structure. Also, when you design that stability, you need to make sure they're able to get to the actual stability elements within your building. So there'll be forces within slabs and floor structures that need to be, tra be transferred to where your stability elements are. 
These are called diaphragm forces and you have to track them through your structure. Another major point in structural design is robustness and disproportion collapse. Now what does that mean? It means that a structure can have minor damage and have that damage extend beyond a disproportional location from, from where it was received. For example, you, can, you cannot leave, you literally lose one column and lose every floor above it. This is most evident in, in a building back in the 60s called Ronan Point, where they had a small explosion at the bottom, then every floor above it fell down. Now, how do you get around this? This is really probably in detailing and connection design. It's mostly in the detailing of the building, so it's just ensuring that you've got all your connections and continuity through your whole structure. Now, as promised, I'm going to give my number one tip to help you progress your career faster as a structural engineer. Communication is by far the number one thing you can do to help improve your skills, and this is really where you should be spending most of your time, especially if you're studying. Now, when you think about communication, everything we do is some form of communication, whether we're talking on the phone to a client, whether we produce the drawings. We need to have those drawings very clear so that everyone can understand and build those. Or even in meetings, emails, or structural advice, we need to make sure that that advice is tailored for the people it's going for. If you've got some of the best engineers in the world, but they can't impart the advice that they know, it's really useless, as no one can actually apply the knowledge that they've had. So you should spend a lot of time on communication. I'll probably do a future video about communicating as a structural engineer. There's also some good books I'll link below that you may be interested in and picking up at some point. But communication is by far the number one thing you can do to help progress your career as a structural engineer. Now, anyway, thanks for watching. If you did like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Now, if you do have any other points, points of view or advice that you'd like to give engineers, don't forget to comment below. Or if you've got any other topics that you'd like me to cover in future videos, also put them in the below section. I'll get back to them as, short, as quickly as possible. I'm always up for a conversation. Anyway, thanks for watching and look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you.